Okay, I asked a great question, like when do you stop using the spiritual tools and when are you avoiding life yeah. and stuff. And I think that's a really important question. I'm glad you asked and I can answer this on camera. Uh, because I, I sort of, I don't want to sort of say that the way I do spirituality, everyone else should do it. Um, and, uh, uh, and so whatever you choose, I mean, uh, whatever I say on camera or in the rooms is... Uh, partly a reflection on me and my own spiritual choices in life. And I'm not saying to anyone that they should do what I do. Uh, uh, and uh, a question that I, I actually, I meet a lot of people who think I'm quite extreme in that, you know, I pursue enlightenment, I pursue full transcendence of the world. Uh, I want to make things 100% meaningless and I'm very enthusiastic to do that. And they say, like, well, you know, what about, you know, what about, you know, what about dating and what about, you know, having some fun today and what about, like, going and seeing a horror movie and stuff like that or going to the local rave club? Aren't you, like, avoiding life by doing all this spiritual work? Um, and, you know, if you, uh, and, uh, and whatever anyone chooses, you know, I, I'm happy for you. You know, and and the, and there's also I think a, a, a great question, which is the rate of spiritual work, as well. I'm quite extreme, and like I want enlightenment, so I want to transcend this world, and spend all my time transcending this world, and being in that, in that, in that what I call the observer, in these states of flow, and that for me is is enough. Or if I'm not in those flows, I want to be in those flow states all the time, and let life come to me. That is not, I'm not saying everyone else should do that. You know, that's how I tend to speak when I sort of, but that's how, but I'm not saying you should do that. Uh, and if you want to take, and there are different routes and there's no right or wrong. If you want to like, okay, I want to go on the spiritual work a bit slower and I want to date this woman and enjoy this woman and have a lot of fun and like, let's go out to Spain for two months and do less spiritual work and enjoy myself some more, uh, you know, that's fine. You know, that's also, that's also great and that's, that's also wonderful. Can she do both? both? Yeah. Can she oh. do that? You see Hawkins, you know, he also had a relationship. Yeah. Maharishi was just him and the ghost. You can, you can do, you can do yeah. both. Um, there is a thing of, absolutely, I think there is a thing of people who, I make a distinction, um, there are those, and uh, absolutely right, you know, being in the world and doing, so I think there's the thing, and, I, and uh, I think there's this thing of like being in the world, enjoying the world, and tr transcending the world at the same time, which I think is a great thing, uh, and there are, the, which I think is a great option, uh, and uh, to do that, and to like, okay, I want to date now, I want to go on dating websites and date, meet lots of women and find the right one. And I also want to like have a, a successful job and I, oh, this career pays enough money. I'm going to go in there and get this job which is going to have enough money. I'm going to be transcending the, the work, doing the work on the job and with the woman. Uh, and I think that's fine. That's great. That's a great option. Because it, it's a bit of a trap. Like I come from a background of addiction which has a lot of restriction shame and guilt mm. and I can step into spiritual work and going into restriction about the world around me yeah. and going in constant shame and guilt because I'm not doing good enough you know what I mean yes so in a way I, I like I stop I even wonder I have a house at home and like what does Sabir do actually does he go just sits at home in the observer and just that's it <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm like and even, I even resentful, like, oh, Jesus Christ, though, you know? <laughs> and, um, I, I th yeah. Well, I, I think, I think these, are, these are great questions. And, you know, like, mm. for me, there's different levels of spiritual intention in different spiritual people. I think, you know, whatever is right, feels right for you is right for you. Mm. And, you know, like, if there's an urge to suddenly have a partner and have a relationship, and, and apply all the spiritual tools you have in that relationship and going out on dates and getting married and going on honeymoon and applying it, then that is right for you. That's like God's will for you. 
And uh, if it's like, well, you know, I, I'm fed up with not having enough money in my life, I want a job which pays me X amount of money, and I'm going to apply for this job, and I'm going to do the transcendence work and have the money at the same time to live a lovely lifestyle. And that feels, I mean, there is a, a thing which I won't talk about now about spiritual discernment. Does it come from your ego or does it come from your higher self? But I'll leave that for another video. But even that, yeah. if there's willingness, consistency, and devotion, like Hawkins says, yeah. even that, is, it's needed. Because it's only when I get an, an unconscious behavior where the payoff is, well, the pain is bigger than the payoff at a certain moment, I am ready to relinquish it. Only when that happens, I have a little bit of spiritual growth. You know what I mean? Otherwise, without those ego traps, I, I can't really spot it. You know, you know what I mean? I, I'd say that's what, I mean, whatever happens for each spiritual seeker, I'd say is perfect for each spiritual yeah. seeker. Yeah. I think for someone, you know, and, I, and actually, I think I have quite an extreme positionality, which I don't, I'm not saying anyone else should adopt my extreme positionality. But you've got to understand I had a near-death spiritual experience, yes. which is not very, you know, the common thing for everyone. Death. To have, also, I had a white light spiritual experience with the teacher of enlightenment, where I went into infinite light. So those, those, those spiritual experiences are extremely transformative to, con to my consciousness, and may not be right for everyone else. And they haven't had the experience that I've had, you know, to be have a near-death and have a white light spiritual experience. So for me, and this, I'm not saying this should be the right for every, any, anyone else, but for me it's like the material world is less interesting, um, you know, than, uh, and so I tend to be drawn more to m mystical stuff. Like Dr. Hugh Len for me is like wonderful, mm -hmm. you know, or, or The Course in Miracles from a mystical angle, like God did not create this world, it is not real. These type of things, and I take it to an, on an extreme positionality of like, uh, if I don't have to explore an aspect of the world and can just transcend it in my consciousness, I will choose that uh, myself. And that's just because I think, uh, I think the, the, uh, the near death showed me the thing, and I had extreme addiction. So I got to experience overindulging in the, in the material world up until the end. Many people haven't had that experience of overindulgence and so they need to explore and that's right for them. Also, but the white light spiritual experience is something that I know cannot be obtained in anything in this world. Uh, and there is, a, there is a yearning to return to that which is not of this world. Yes. And that creates mm. quite an extreme, for myself, I don't, I don't say that I, what I do, everyone should do. Absolutely not, and, is, and can be wrong for other people. I don't want to give that mis, mis message that you must do what, I'm not trying to start a cult, uh, yes. or uh, say like, okay, forget the world, never date, never work, and sit on a rock, and transcend the world until you're enlightened. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that to anyone. If people, miss, people may misunderstand me to say I'm preaching and telling other people what they should do. And, I'm, and that is not my thing. So hopefully this video will try and clear it up. I'm not trying to yeah. tell anyone what they should do. Because yeah. uh, it's not like I've... Uh, it's just because it's, it's probably such a different experience, such a, an infinite and such a divine experience going through that. And once you've experienced, you realize there's nothing actually as... Out here, that can match that. No. But then there's this little gap, that's not that little. Mm. You know, you come from a place you've tasted that, and uh, I haven't. No. You know, and yeah. in a way, I go like, oh, I should be better. I should be doing more spiritual work. I should. Do, I should. I should. Yeah. That just going into mm. the loop of shame and guilt yeah. and spiritual perfectionism, and that in and of itself is hell. Yeah. Yes, and I would also say I'm not the right person for everyone you know I'm not the right cup of tea for everyone on this planet uh, and uh, and everyone and anyone who, who I do come in, cro in contact with um, yeah if you know I, sh I, will, I will try and tell them that the first thing like this is not the law I'm telling you to sort of sort of do and, and actually for each different person who's had different experiences 
you know, how their life unfolds is in a way perfect for them, whatever it is, you know. Uh, and if there are, uh, I still have an ego, so I'm still transcending stuff. I'm not claiming even to be enlightened or anything. So, but, um, but there ha those experiences were so profound for me that they, they add a kind of ferocity, spiritual ferocity, or to burn, to burn off everything, which I, I which I may, you know, probably is not in everybody to the same extent as it is in me. And I still have battles with my ego as well, you know, as things come up. But there is that, there is still. Hawkins does talk about it actually. Once you're touched in that way, this world, um, there is a kind of a spiritual. It's hard to put it in, in words, what it is. Not really a mental thing. Mm. But there is a calling to burn stuff off, you know. And the ego ferociously tries to get you back hooked mm. into the world and, and chase things, and that still does happen. Uh, but there's also something that wants to transcend. So I keep saying in my videos and in, in this group, transcending things, because that's what the place I want to return. Mm. Uh, but it's not anything that I'm trying to tell everyone that they must do. Uh, and also, what I would say is whatever you do, and, if, uh, and uh, what you said is absolutely right. Like, if you want to have a relationship, have a relationship and, and work on it. If you want to have a, a, a super career, have a super career and work on it. And that will also work as well, you know, and that may be the right thing for you as well. And if, you, and if it's a wrong choice, that's still good. You know, uh, like uh, this alcoholic person who takes drugs, who I think is the right person for me, you know, go, go, go for it. <laughs> and, uh, and that would also be great as well, you know. Well, we're not really talking about that. I'm joking. Extreme, I'm, I'm joking. I'm it's joking. not like I'm in Latin or I'm in the Shark Tank. Uh, I was a joke. Yeah. Was a joke. But, but yeah, I think I had to make peace with that. Because yeah. otherwise, the spiritual perfectionism Although I know exactly that whenever, whenever I hear you, I hear the truth. It's not a mental thing. It's, I know. I get reminded. And I know that's truth. Uh, I had to make peace that it's, it's yeah. a different... It's, I have, I've, ha I've had a different a journey. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that I'm going into evil stuff and no. going into addiction. But I had to make peace between that and that gap. Because otherwise, I'll just stop coming here because of the guilt and shame. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is that not good enough? Yeah. Well, I'm so happy you, you've asked me this yeah. because, because, uh, and we're on camera, so I'm so happy because, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, uh, and there is a risk that people can take what I say in a way, and you're quite right, I should share about yeah. it, because I have great conviction in my, in what I do. So that convic conviction can sometimes be infectious to people because I have, in myself, uh, and there is a risk in a way, because I have absolute certainty I want to be free, mm. you know, with absolute conviction that that infinite place is what I, I yearn to be in all the time. Mm. So that can have a, an effect on people who hear me, that they're mm. wrong for not, not mm. being exactly like me, not being a severe clone, if I can use that. Mm. So you're, you, you are bad and guilty and a wrong person for not sitting at home for and watching videos on the Observer non-stop. <laughs> you know, like you are a bad, bad person that deserves to be punished. So, 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 like I can say, shame on you for, feel, for feeling guilty about feeling guilty. Yeah, yeah, so, so, they're, 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 so, so those, those are great things. So, so yeah, no, that's yeah. Uh, so you know, like I'm mm -hmm. not saying that you should be, and there is there is that you're quite right, like some people. Yeah. But I'm not I'm not saying if you don't be exactly like me, you should feel guilty and bad, and uh, and uh, so that is not the thing. And hopefully this video will be a chance for me to, you know, like you should not have a life. You should practice the observer, <laughs> and if you do not, you are a bad person and should feel guilty about it. <laughs> and you should not. Should not come back here unless you've done that for the whole week. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no girlfriends and no jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so I'm not saying. I'm not saying that. So yeah.